Good evening and welcome to evening prayer for this Tuesday after Pentecost, June the 2nd. That's better, now I can read it. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun, and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. Understand, O dullest of the people, fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, does he not rebuke? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord, knows the thoughts of man, that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law, to give him rest from days of trouble, until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not forsake his people, he will not abandon his heritage. New Testament reading tonight is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, beginning in verse 24, which would be the conversation Jesus and the disciples were having uh, between leaving the upper room and arriving at the Garden at Gethsemane. And as usual, we see the apostles doing uh, their usual self-centered, stupid things. A dispute also rose among them as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The king of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, let the greatest among you become as the youngest, and the leader as one who serves. For who is greater, one who reclines at table or one who serves? Is it not the one who reclines at table? But I am among you as the one who serves. You are those who have stayed with me in my trials, and I assign to you, as my Father assigned to me, a kingdom, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you, that your faith may not fail, and when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers." Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. Jesus says, I tell you, Peter, the rooster will not crow this day until you deny me three times. And he said to them, When I sent you out with no money bag or knapsack or sandals, did you lack anything? They said nothing. He said to them, But now let the one who has a money bag take it, and likewise a knapsack, and let the one who has no sword sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture must be fulfilled in me, and he is numbered with the transgressors. So what is written about me has its fulfillment. And they said, Look, Lord, here are two swords. And he said to them, It is enough. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. 
And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Our Book of Concord reading tonight is from the Large Catechism, Section 3, beginning in paragraph 49, the Lord's Prayer, Second Petition. Thy kingdom come. In the first petition, we prayed about God's honor and name. We prayed that he would prevent the world from adorning its lies and wickedness with God's name, but that he would cause his name to be valued as great and holy both in doctrine and life, so that he may be praised and magnified in us. Here we pray that his kingdom also may come, but just as God's name is holy in itself, and we still pray that it be holy among us, so also his kingdom comes of itself, without our prayer. Yet we still pray that it may come to us that is, triumph among us and with us, so that we may be a part of those people among whom his name is hallowed and his kingdom prospers. But what is God's kingdom? Answer. Nothing other, other than what we learned in the Creed. God sent his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, into the world to redeem and to deliver us from the devil's power. 1 John 3.8 He sent him to bring us to himself and to govern us as a king of righteousness, life, and salvation against sin, death, and and an evil conscience. For this reason he has also given his Holy Spirit, who is to bring these things home to us by his holy word and to illumine and strengthen us in the faith by his power. We pray here in the first place that this may happen with us. We pray that his name may be so praised through God's holy word in a Christian life that we who have accepted it may abide and daily grow in it, and that it may gain approval and acceptance among other people. We pray that it may go forth with power throughout the world. 2 Thessalonians 3.1 We pray that many may find entrance into the kingdom of grace. John 3.5 Be made partakers of redemption. Colossians 1.12-14 And be led to it by the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.14 So that we may altogether remain forever in the one kingdom now begun. For the coming of God's kingdom to us happens in two ways here in time through the word and faith, and in eternity forever through revelation. Now we pray for both these things. We pray that the kingdom may come to those who are not yet in it, and by daily growth that it may come to us who have received it both now and hereafter in eternal life. All this is nothing other than saying, Dear Father, we pray, give us first your word so that the gospel may be preached properly throughout the world. Second, may the gospel be received in faith and work and live in us, so that through the word and the Holy Spirit's power, your kingdom may triumph among us. And we pray that the devil's kingdom be put down, so that he may have no right or power over us, until at last his power may be utterly destroyed. So sin, death, and hell shall be exterminated. Then we may live forever in perfect righteousness and blessedness. From this you see that we do not pray here for a crust of bread or a temporal perishable good, Instead, we pray for an eternal, inestimable treasure and everything that God himself possesses. This is far too great for any human heart to think about desiring, if God had not himself commanded us to pray for the same. But because he is God, he also claims the honor of giving much more and more abundantly than anyone can understand. He is like an eternal, unfailing fountain. The more it pours forth and overflows, the more it continues to give. God desires nothing more seriously from us than we ask him for much and great things. In fact, he is angry if we do not ask and pray confidently. It's like a time when the richest and most mighty emperor would tell a poor beggar to ask whatever he might desire. The emperor was ready to give great royal presents, but the fool would only beg for a dish of gruel. That man would rightly be considered a rogue and a scoundrel, who treated the command of his imperial majesty like a joke, and a game that was not worthy and a game and was not worthy of coming into his presence in the same way it is a great shame and dishonor to god if we to whom he offers and pledges so many inexpressible treasures despise the treasures or do not have the confidence to receive them but hardly dare to pray for a piece of bread 
All this is the fault of shameful unbelief that does not even look to God for enough decent food to satisfy the stomach. How much less does such unbelief expect to receive eternal treasures from God without doubt? Therefore, we must strengthen ourselves against such doubt, and let this be our first prayer. Then, indeed, we shall have everything else in abundance, as Christ teaches. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. For how could he allow us to suffer lack and to be desperate for temporal things when he promises to give us what is eternal and never perishes? We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy, with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil one has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people, and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your Son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Tonight we're going to do something a little different. Uh, this is a lament uh, for America that was written by uh, the pastor of Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Columbus, Ohio, which they used this past Sunday. O Christ, once again we come before you, affected by what we've seen, read, heard, and experienced. O Christ, we come before you because of the losses and suffering we have experienced these last few months. O Christ, we come before you because of the loss of life, the violence, and the shootings that have affected, afflicted our homes, communities, and nation. O Christ, these are trying and exhausting times. O Christ, there is a spirit of frustration, exhaustion, anger, and despair many feel and experience. O Christ, this is not what you desire for us or creation. O Christ, receive our cry of lament. O Christ, do not reject or forsake us in these days. O Christ, let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never-failing stream. O crucified one, you see and know the pain and suffering that sin inflicts on us all. O crucified one, you took on human flesh and have given voice to lament, crying out, My God, my God. O crucified and risen one, receive our cries of lament.
O crucified and risen one. Help and renew us so we can praise you. Hear our prayer, O Lord, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer, Christ in your mercy. Hear our prayer, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer, amen. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.